diverse team in terms of their attack. And Western New York coming in here trying to get a win. They came close the last time three weeks ago, Kendra. Fought back with two goals late, but it wound up being a 3-2 Portland win. We knew they were the comeback queens. We kept waiting for it, waiting for it. And holy cow, was that an exciting game the way they wrapped that one up. The Flash wearing their white tops and black shorts will start with the ball. Portland in their home red uniforms. And you really get the feeling and all the conversations we had and watching training yesterday. Who sets the tone in these first few minutes could be really important. And who gets the first goal? We couldn't have not, we could not have heard Paul Riley say that enough. It is so important they score first. Takeaway by the Thorns is going to get it to Nadim in the box. Boy, that could have been a disastrous start for Western New York. As we just got done talking about who is going to score the first goal and a turnover in their own defensive third of the field. And Sam Mewis comes through with those long legs and a slide tackle and saves the day. Team, nine goals on the season. And it'll be the NWSL assist leader, Tobin Heath, to take the corner. Left footed ball bounces right back to Heath. And it'll be a second quick corner to start things off for the Thorns. She tried that short corner, I shouldn't say a short corner, a near post corner, and it took a funny skip. A tough bounce for Western New York to try to handle on that near post. Marco Vega, our referee today, already having some conversations with positioning and a little physicality perhaps on this corner kick. Much better service this time from Heath. But headed out of bounds. Corner kick number three on the way. When you can see the battle for the positioning right in front of the goalkeeper in front of D'Angelo, and that's what the ref is keeping an eye on. Nadim is holding her hands out. But who has the right to that ground? Hinkle can step in there in the middle too. So, But at the same time, you don't want to be shielding your keeper from being able to come off her line. Heath will try it again. So many tall targets. Really, both of these teams excellent in terms of what they can throw in there on set pieces. Oh, Hinkle had time to take a little bit of a touch there, but... Instead, it'll go right back to Portland. Nadim on the ball. D'Angelo was way off her line. Sinclair gets the shot off. But D'Angelo had recovered enough that time. I think she's getting a little antsy back there. With so much action inside of her own 18-yard box, she wants to get that ball out. You could see Sam Mewis after D'Angelo had the ball in her hands. She's putting her hands down and saying, like, okay, guys, let's calm down here. Let's settle in, play our game. And you talked about it a little bit, Kendra, but it is a very different game these two teams will try to play. Well, very different in the sense that Western New York loves to pressure in that third of the field and their offensive third, forcing their turnovers and really keeping Portland on their toes. And on the opposite side, you've got Portland who just possesses the heck out of the ball and finds a way to get in the middle of the field, get it out wide, and then find Sinclair up top. And it's not to say that Western New York can't possess the ball as well. They just possess it in a very different way. Christine Sinclair, Canada's all-time leading scorer on the move for Portland. Such composure. Everybody looking for a handball. None called. Hinkle will have time to build out of the back this time. Well, they can't focus on that no call too much here. Western New York's going the other way. McCall's are bony. Played in Portland last season, tripped up, and this will be an early free kick chance for the Flash. Let's take a look here as Sinclair gets the ball. And oh, no question. No question, and her arm is away from her body there, so that is a clear handball and a clear foul on the other end. But nonetheless, the handball wasn't whistled. You've got to keep playing. And now a dangerous chance here for Western New York. 
Portland scored its first goal in the last meeting between these two teams off of a penalty kick. Seems like they should have had one there. Dull Kemper looking far post. McDonald was able to get perhaps the bottom of her cleat on it. Not much she could do with that ball. But you know who was right behind her? Lynn Williams getting ready to volley that one out of the air. I have a feeling if McDonald hadn't touched it, look oh, at yeah. Williams was lining that one up. Can't fault McDonald for going for it, though. No, and those two have been so good together for Western New York this season. Marco Vega, our referee, assisted by Amanda Ross, Benjamin Wooten, and our fourth official, Farad Dodko. Allie Long under some pressure. Uh, Sam Mewis really coming in with a tough challenge. A little bit silly on Sam Mewis right there. I mean, she had Allie Long facing sideways, backwards almost, in her own half of the field. She could have just stepped to her. And Kevin, look at she had a double team come in there from Williams as well. So maybe a little bit too much. The adrenaline is pumping, I'm sure. And Sam Mew is trying to set the tone in the middle of the field early. Well, how much does number 10 in red get the ball? That is one thing to watch. As that's a great flick on by Haran. Sinclair trying to get to it. And D'Angelo manages to beat everybody to the ball. Lynn Williams, the golden boot winner, trying to turn. goals on the season for Williams. It's tied with Kalia Ojai from Houston, but Williams had a few more assists, actually one more assist. She had five, Kalia had four. And you see as those scoring leaders for the regular season, two of the top three on our field and the fourth wearing the red jersey on our field here today for Portland. So plenty of firepower between these two teams. Nadeem has been such a fantastic addition to this Portland attack this season. Catherine Reynolds will take the long throw. Another good flick from Haran. McDonald is tracked way back for the ball. Is Raboni? That's scary. Here's Ali Long playing it back. Right there, Western New York allowed two things that Paul Riley said they couldn't do. First, they allowed the ball in the middle, and then they allowed it out the left side. And he said, we do not want that ball going on the left where Tobin Heath is, and of course, Klingenberg as well. Nice work by Emily Sonnet, rookie defender, U.S. national team member. Mark Parsons told us yesterday, we have to weather the storm. The storm is coming. We have to weather it. But right now, you feel like it's a little role reversal. Western New York is weathering the storm here that Portland is putting on to start this match. Not a good ball there from Alana Kennedy. She knew it. Now Mark Parsons admitted, too, I think I'm going to be a little bit stressed on the <laughs> sideline there. So much on the line. He knows what this team is capable of. Donald just couldn't get the touch she wanted on that ball from Zerboni, so it'll go back to Portland. Reynolds, searching ball, but it'll get to D'Angelo. Trying to work up that right side. Now they will get it to Mackenzie Doniak. When you saw a little Eddie, Liz Eddie having a conversation with the referee there, she felt like there was a little bit of a tug from Tobin Heath. And Coach Riley flat out said, they don't like each other. <laughs> and I said, literally? Or, you know, I think it's just, 
he said last game they niggled each other a lot. Uh, that was he's got some interesting yeah. word choice. For Doesn't sure. sound as good when I say it. Western New York in the box. Williams had the volley, but too high. And if you remember at all the way that this match went three weeks ago here in Portland, I think I know you'd agree that Western New York and the storm they brought early, really, it looked as though Portland were on their heels and Western New York a little unlucky, maybe, not to have gotten a goal out of that and then just like that, Portland turned it on, had a ball where they got in behind, foul in the box, and a deep penalty kick, and they just took it from there. Klingenberg working with Sinclair. He's on that dangerous side with Tobin Heath. Ali Long. Reynolds. Heath making a diagonal run through there. The communication in the midfield and the back line for Western New York has to be fantastic. If you watch the movement off the ball on these players for Portland, it is unbelievable. Tough to defend as Reynolds sends it in. Well, they can go anywhere they want in exchange. You know, they're, I mean, Tobin Heath, she's in the middle, and Nadine moves into this, you know, in, into the up top position. Reynolds goes up the right flank. The pieces are so versatile, it's tough to defend. Reynolds to Haran. Doniak just she, clears it. She had Eddie making a run there off her right shoulder. Probably could have just played it out wide to keep possession. Klingenberg trying to get behind with Haran, who is offside. Probably a good thing because it was two on one over there, too. You talk about all those moving parts and talented attacking players for Portland. And it's one of the reasons I think everyone here in Portland told us they've been playing so well now because they have taken this entire season to figure one another out. How is Lindsay Horan going to work in her first season in NWSL? How is Nadine going to play with Sinclair up top? They've had a lot of changes to this Portland team, and they feel like they've hit their stride. They've won four in a row. Megan Klingenberg telling me yesterday she felt like they are playing some of their best soccer right now. Well, and again with the Olympic break in the middle of the field, so or in the middle of the season. They weathered through that, and then you see on their four-game winning streak what they've done, scoring at least three goals in each of those games. Allie Long, the NWSL Player of the Month, had five goals and an assist in that stretch. McDonald has a nice long throw-in. Goes to Abby Urseg, the New Zealand captain. A little miscommunication from the Portland defense, but Michelle Betos is there to calm everybody down and collect the ball. Well, in Western New York, getting what they wanted out of this throw from McDonald. A nice flick on, gets it right, bouncing inside that box. Some confusion, and Williams just couldn't get to it. Long as Tobin Heath making a run perfectly timed Heath ball across the box good job defensively Jaylene Hinkle got back where she needed to be and she just played it safe getting out over the end line as soon as Eddie went to step here I saw Tobin Heath checking back you see Allie Long and their chemistry and the vision that ball was going to be trouble and Eddie has got to be smart Try not to be too aggressive and trying to jump that route by Tobin Heath because she's going to get beat in behind. You can see why Paul Riley was concerned about Heath in that matchup on that side. Fourth corner of the game for Portland. Floating right in the middle where it is headed away by Mewis. But back to Heath. Chance for a secondary ball. Uh, Washington Spirit score their first goal in the match on Friday night on a secondary ball off of a corner kick. Allie Krieger, the captain for Washington, was able to make a beautiful run and finish it off. A 
looks like an absolutely packed house here once again, as it so often is in Providence Park. Fans in Portland loving their thorns. And it poured rain all morning. It was like the skies parted just in time for this game to at least give us a dry one. Not that that would have deterred the fans around here. Sinclair and Zerboni a little tied up. Hinkle is going to try to get to McDonald. So now we'll see that throw in from McDonald on the other side. And they will bring in Urseg again, number six. Abby Urseg, one of the targets in the air, 5'10. She got her head to the ball last time, and then that's what you want if you're Western New York. Give those other players like Lynn Williams a chance to come on to it. Zerboni had a chance. Now Mewis, and she's got the goal. Sam Mewis puts Western New York up. Unbelievable. Against the run of play, they take advantage of that long throw. McDonald launches this one in. And Ursaig doesn't really get her head on it, but it's enough for a distraction. Zerboni mishits it. And how about the half volley from Sam Mewis? We were talking about this earlier. The fact that McDonald and Lynn Williams have over 50% of their goals. Somebody else might have to step up today, and it's Sam Mewis. Sixth goal of the season for Mewis. And how important is that, Kendra, that early goal for this Western New York team on the road? Early goal, we said Paul Riley must have said it a thousand times yesterday. Doesn't make a difference necessarily. I mean, you can't let up. You can't change the way you're playing. But holy cow, on the road in front of this crowd. Just absolutely. A little confidence. Absolutely. Especially the way they were getting pounded here to start the half. They were the ones having to weather the storm from Portland. So to come the other way, really the second time they've even gotten into that offensive third and put one away. You know how important early goals can be actually for both of these teams this season, unbeaten when they have scored first. Western New York, seven wins, one draw when they've gotten the first goal in the match. We talked a lot about how they come back because they did that a lot late in the season, but they also did very well when they had a chance to get up early. Portland looking for a quick answer. Heath. Whoa. A little ambitious, but we knew they were going to serve some long balls in. And this one's going to hold up there in the corner. Betos will have to just come and clear it away. And not a good clearance as she will go back to her goal. Taking a look at this throw, and I think Parsons might have been complaining here. He went straight to the fourth official and seemed upset. But I'm not sure what he would have been upset on on that one. I mean, that looked, unless it was a previous, you know, sometimes when they get scored on, the coach will go back two or three plays about a missed call or a whistle or something that led to the throw in the first place. It's tough to say. Remember, there was a handball not called in the box yes, on the Western absolutely. New York defense early that would have given Portland a penalty kick. But then we were talking to Riley yesterday. He said he was going back to their dodgy penalty <laughs> that the Thorns had in their favor last game. So nobody's ever happy, right? I'd hate to be an official. Oh, I know. <laughs> he right along that far sideline. It's Klingenberg making a run. Klingenberg trying to sneak through, just bodied off of the ball. That's a dangerous touch defensively, though, as Heath gets back to it and loses it. I think Dahl Kemper has to be a little bit sharper in that center back position because Ursek does a good job there. Maybe a little bit of an arm extension, but then she one touches it back to Ursek in traffic with Klingenberg right on her instead of that's where you just need that big clearance, get it out of pressure because Klingenberg is going to continue to make those runs forward as much as she can and try to get around that end line. And remember, there is still a lot of youth and relative inexperience on this Western New York team. Hinkle. Mewis. 
Paul Riley will tell you, or at least he certainly told his team, look, we got nothing to lose. You go in there and play, like all of the pressure is on Portland because he said, told us frankly earlier in the season, nobody expected this Western New York team to come and do what they've done this season and even be in contention. And yet, here this young group of players is. McDonald's throw again, targeting Urseg. <laughs> Lindsey Horan comes away with it. Ooh. Immediately challenged, and there is a whistle. That's Mackenzie Joniak. <laughs> She's not happy with that call. I think she maybe wanted again, going back to the previous contact before she committed the foul. This is just a passionate, I mean, these two teams have so much respect for one another and how they play, and so competitive. Nice touch from Horan to Sinclair. Nadim is on the shot and the big save. D'Angelo coming up huge, but not over yet. He left-footed shot, and now Sabrina D'Angelo can breathe a sigh of relief for a moment. Wow. There goes that movement again, in behind. You cannot lose track of Nadim. Somebody's got to be keeping an eye on her. And then that second ball, how about the clearance? Lynn Williams leading the charge the other way for Western New York. She is so fast. Not a lot she could do. I was trying to work with Zerboni, but at least did get another throw-in attempt here for McDonald. Herseg will trot into the box. She has been the target for McDonald on the last few throw-ins. She helped on the goal, and it again goes toward Herseg at the near post. First, that slotted ball through. Nadim sneaks in behind with that movement. A huge save. Gives up quite the rebound, but that is not a good clearance by McCall Zerboni. I don't blame her for just playing the way you're facing, but got to lift it a little bit because then Tobin Heath had a pretty good chance after that. And McCall, one of the more veteran players on this Western New York team. She was really a heart and soul of the Flash a couple of years ago. She returns to the team where she spent 2013 and 2014 after playing here in Portland last year. Williams. And that's good defending by Emily Menges. Nadine through her hand. Heath, flag is up. So close. Wasn't by much. Called it, Kendra. That back line for Western New York has really got to be on their toes, aware not only of where everyone is, but of the runs that are coming out. Well, and yesterday when we talked to head coach Paul Riley, he must have told us, you know, 13 different scenarios of runs that can be made in behind by different players of Portland if they don't keep an eye on it. And you can see it already. Second NWSL semifinal of 2016, an ent entertaining one so far as the Western New York Flash are charging once again. They lead the Portland Thorns, the regular season champs, 1-0. Doniak service into the box. Far post for McDonald, and it is out of bounds on Portland. First corner kick of the match coming for Western New York. And how about the final effort there by McDonald? Just long enough, just diving to get a piece of her head on it. And in doing so, she gets a corner kick. And she's told us, six feet tall, her height, absolutely something she has used to her advantage throughout her career. And she's a journey woman through this league. Western New York, fifth team in four years for McDonald and NWSL, but having a fantastic year. 10 goals, seven assists. I think they're looking for McDonald, and they are on that service. Zaboni touches it out to Doniak. And Betos won't have any 
traffic as she snags it out of the air. Rachos, the finalist for the award she won last year, NWSL Goalkeeper of the Year. Playing behind the best defense and is a big part of the best defense in the league this season. It's 19 goals allowed by Portland during the regular season. Some pressure for Sonnet. Plays it back to Betos. Nadine Henri also in that midfield this season for Portland. And just another key piece for Portland, but we just don't, she doesn't get mentioned that often when you're surrounded by Allie Long, Nadia and Nadine. You've got Christine Sinclair, then Lindsay Horan joins the team. But Henri, another very important piece. Now Mark Parsons spoke very highly of her and the influence she can have in the midfield. This is just her ninth start of the season, 10th appearance. Actually, the first match she ever played this season was June 17th against the Western New York Clash. Williams just hanging around enough, applying a little bit of pressure on that back line for Portland. Henri has it blocked by Zerboni. Well, and you could see her point to the midfield. That she only had one option. It was go to the middle of the field. There was a big space there, but nobody checking to to help her out. Sonnet looking back central as Ali Long has dropped deep to try to play make. Pretty deep as well, and there's that pressure that Western New York will apply. Ursay, they come in numbers, but if you can break that pressure, Mark Parson said, that's where they feel like they can really gain an advantage, get past that first line, right? And Paul Riley agreed. He told us the same thing. If they can break that first line, that was our weakness in our last matchup against them. They've got so many talented players going forward. If they can break our first line of pressure, we're in a bit of trouble. Not a good touch from Kennedy, who then fouls and will give a free kick, and she'll get a card. And Sinclair still on the ground, looking to be in a bit of pain, and everybody holding their breath. Christine Sinclair. What an incredible player she has been, both internationally and in NWSL. She get her with a bit of studs here, because you know what? A little bit on that follow through, maybe a little bit of cleat on that ankle. Kennedy probably frustrated with that poor first touch. Sinclair back up. Tobin Heath over the ball. A lot of movement going on. Mewis. Won it for Western New York initially. Reynolds will send it right back into Long. Sinclair tries to back pass, but can't get it through. McDonald. Boy, Reynolds really had to play that quickly with McDonald on her back. Now it's back to Long. Nadim. Klingenberg and Eddie. Somehow, some way, Portland trying to play this the way they want to play it and find some openings in those lines between the Western New York pressure. Henri. 
comes on and gets it to Nadine. Long. Look at the space out wide for Haran. Haran against Eddie. Klingenberg. Heath. Nadim still on it. Very right, patient here from Portland. Allie Long takes the shot right at D'Angelo. All that work. And then you figure maybe wanting a little bit something better at the end. Well, I was trying to keep track of how many passes Portland had connected there before that first ball in on the cross. And not a bad look and a good opportunity. She just hits it dead center. And credit to Western New York because they stayed patient, didn't dive in, almost got caught with a slide tackle by Zerboni, but they recovered. Zerboni on the ball now. To Mewis, the goal scorer. Lynn Williams has it in the middle, takes the shot, and the save from Betos. right here look at this slotted ball through Lynn Williams takes one touch not a great shot but nonetheless a diving save by Beto's from close range from Williams somehow she sneaks in between that Portland defense Michelle Beto's denying the golden boot winner but giving up a corner service coming toward Beto's again and she has it Betos has the all-time record for saves at Portland. That one may be one of the biggest. Turnover will get it to Urseg. Now Mues. Doniak with Eddie making an overlapping run. There is the ball, but not the best. Doniak's pass a little off. That's going to give it back to Portland. Klingenberg has Sinclair in the middle, but that ball's not going to work out. Well, in a rarity that the three on that side aren't maybe on the same page. I mean, that rarely happens when you've got Sinclair and Klingenberg and Heath all on that same side trying to combine. Nadim heads it down. Finds Sinclair. What a touch to get past the traffic. Nadim saw something. Manages even with a little bit of a deflection to find Klingenberg. Long will switch it back over to Reynolds. Reynolds. Back and forth it goes. Touched by Sinclair. Offside flag is up. That was the second ball here. Watch this header right there. And lucky for Western New York, they've got to be careful. I mean, clearly you want to step and try to force that offside when you've got those players like that trying to sneak in behind, but can't be too reliant on the sideline official to make that right call. Western New York turns it over to the good work of Haran. A little flare on the pass on the side. Why not? Heath. It's really just Tobin Heath here. As she goes down hard and earns the free kick. Western New York disagrees. Let's see what you think. You know, I think that's a tough one. I think she, you know, when someone's going at that pace and she did get a step on her, Heath had a half a step on her. If they would have been more even shoulder to shoulder, I'd say that's a no call, but she got enough in front of her. If you touch someone's foot just a tad and, uh, you know, trip them up like that, it doesn't take much when you're going at that speed. 
Yeah, and in real time, she did in hit real the ground time, hard. Yes. That initial free kick deflected by Western New York. So they now have a chance for a counter attack. Doniak trying to cut in past Menges, gets it to Williams off the crossbar. Lewis can't keep her feet. Heath is going to take her time here. Didn't like her options going the other way, but don't think she wanted to do that either. What a sequence of events. First of all, this ball in by Doniak. She beats her defender on that side. Lynn Williams, crossbar. And then you see Sam Mewis on that next play. She tries to get it out, trips on the ball. Heath goes the other direction. And a clear foul on that one. Just the back and forth of this game. Some excellent chances on both sides. So far, Western New York, the only one to break through. They practiced this a lot in training yesterday. Williams couldn't quite get up to it. Now it's Kennedy, excuse me. Alana Kennedy came in. That'll be a goal kick for Portland. Every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon weekdays at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 a.m. Pacific, only on FS1. McDonald again with this long throw. Herseg heading into the box for the flick. Even if she doesn't get her head on it, she attracts so much attention and draws a couple defenders. It opens somebody up like it did on the first goal. Once again, it goes toward Urseg, but Lindsay Horan right there with her. Zerboni gets it back. Urseg is down, shot from McDonald. Looking far post, and it's in! Doniak has given Western New York a two-goal lead. And it started with the long throw once again by Jess McDonald. If she's not getting it done with the goal, she's getting it done with these long throws, helping out her team. Watch this play again. Ursay comes out. She gets a little shove there by Haran, but then watch the trip. I think maybe a little bit of an intentional trip. Now, I don't think that causes the goal. There was two, three more passes after that play, but there was no whistle. First, Ursay gets a little shove by Haran, and then right here, that's a pretty clear trip. Well, that explains why the crowd's been booing so profusely recently. But it's hard because then, uh, you know, what do you call the, the first push, the second trip, the, you know, maybe they, they cancel each other out and you just keep playing and then you get a, a goal on the far side. Sinclair's going to turn and Christine Sinclair with the quick response for Portland. Christine Sinclair, she used the pressure, felt Kennedy on her back, didn't even go up in the air for it. Turned around and got herself a look, which she made sure not to miss. Seventh goal of the season for Christine Sinclair. Well, and then Paul Riley was upset about the shove, but to be honest, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I thought she just played it perfectly. She shielded the ball. If you're Kennedy, you're going to have to expect some contact there. Well, Paul Riley has just been ejected from this game. Being told he actually ran into the fourth official and is now going to have to leave. Wow. 
So the former coach of the Portland Thorns, now with the Western New York Flash, ejected after the Thorns answered less than a minute after Western New York's last goal. Does this feel like the playoffs to you? Wow, it feels like a final. <laughs> Can you imagine the feeling Gosh. that that Washington is having watching this game? I mean, they probably can't wait for next week to come soon enough watching the emotion and the energy of this match. They're saying just go ahead and wear wow. yourselves out, whoever makes it to Houston. I don't even want to be the fourth official today. I think he's had more conversations with both of these coaches than anybody. Even after Riley got ejected, then the fourth official walks over to Parsons and he's still having a conversation about the previous trip on the last goal. And Look this, at this, that last goal from Sinclair. Beautiful. One touch, right footed volley. Maybe a little bit of contact, but I don't think it's anything that needs to be whistled. And Kennedy has to expect that contact. No question. And that's a little bit of a lazy ball, but it does get back to D'Angelo. How huge was that response? Less than a minute after going down two goals. Portland saw an opening with Sinclair. Yes, they like the build, but they know they have that option too. The ref's going to whistle this one back on the previous contact. As much as you play with passion and intensity, you also have to realize when you need to rein it in a little bit and keep your composure. Absolutely. I think both of these sides right now have to do that. A little bit of a check. Don't let the physical physicality get away from you. Don't commit any silly fouls. Whoops. Sinclair. Lynn Williams, the one to get back to her first, and she gives it back to Western New York. Zerboni and Reynolds beats her to the ball. Thumbs up from Zerboni. A nice ball in, and she forces the turnover. And also the the ejection or the throwing out of Paul Riley can you know that can do one of two things really to his side. Let's see if it motivates him and puts a spark under them even more. McDonald's throw has been lethal. Urseg the one to keep it moving in the box as she tries to this time. Hinkle that left foot such a valuable weapon for the flash this season. Heath tripped up. Pass off the mark from Henri. Nadim took a little too much time, but gets it back. A little too ambitious, I think, on that one. There's times where Allie Long could just put that 50, 60 yard ball on a dime, but she was falling backwards. Ursa can't get to it before Heath does. Nadim. I feel like these Ursig Heath encounters are going to be fun to watch there's as a, this match goes on. There's a few of them on the field. Don't you feel like oh, it? McDonald trying to get to this ball first. But Betos aggressively comes out. And yes, I do. <laughs> Several of them involving Heath. Because <laughs> she's so dang tricky with the ball at her feet. I think it drives the opponent crazy. When you're trying to defend that, you even asked her teammates yesterday, do you guys feel like she's going, you know where she's going with the ball now because it takes a little while. 10 assists for Heath. NWSL record. She had four assists in their recent four game winning streak. Good hustle. 
hustle there. Kennedy. Ursaig and Uis have to communicate and do. Hinkle trying to keep it away from Henri. One minute of stoppage time will be added on to this first half. Minimum of one minute. for Portland. Slide tackle from Zerboni. Gives it back to Henri, but just past the outstretched toe of Christine Sinclair. So far, the center backs have held strong on that back line for Portland against the threat of McDonald and Williams trying to get in behind. It's really been when they've reset with the long throw-ins from McDonald that Western New York has been the most dangerous. And indeed, the flash with a 2-1 lead on the road after the first half of action. Well, it's what we were expecting. It's what we were hoping for, and we're getting it so far here in the first half. A lot of it attacking, a lot of excitement and drama. And we are now joined by Portland head coach Mark Parsons. Coach, you told us yesterday you knew there would be a storm coming from Western New York. I think we saw that. How do you feel like your team weathered it? Well, we haven't quite weathered it, have we? As we conceded two goals. Uh, you know, their threats from set pieces and long throws, we knew it was coming. And you know, we're trying to manage some, some gamesmanship that's going on off the ball that isn't being managed by the people it should be. And, and we'll set up there at half time, take care of some of that stuff. But we can be a lot better with the ball, so we haven't we haven't hurt them the way we should. We've got to take care of their dangers and their threats, but let's try and put them on the back foot. We can be cleaner with our ball movement, we can be sharper with our movement, and we can hurt them. There's gaps behind that back line, and I think we can get our dangerous players in there like we did with Sink. We've got more opportunities to get a goal. Coach, thank you so much. Cheers. Great to hear from Mark Parsons, head coach of the Thorns. His team currently trailing Western New York. Coming up at halftime, NWSL Commissioner Jeff Flush will stop by. Plus, first half highlights and stats.